Welcome everybody to Techcraft, this is Rob, and in this video I'm going to talk all about how you can automate and control your music, videos, and media playback using iOS shortcuts. Let's go. So when we talk about media playback, we're not just talking about playing music on your iPad, we're also talking about video, YouTube, any kind of media you can consume on the iPad, but also we're talking about controlling the playback destination as well. So it's not just playing back through the iPad speakers or through the iPhone speakers. So let's dive straight in and create our first shortcut. So I'm gonna click the Create Shortcuts button here, and let me just show you very quickly the kinds of things you can do. So if we go into the Media tab here, you'll see that we can do things in the App Store, we can do some audio recording, camera stuff. If we scroll down even further, you'll see we can do kind of things with the Music app, things with the Photos app, Control Playback and Play That Destination. This one in particular will become very important. We can do podcast stuff. now. What I also want to show you is there is another view on this that I think is perhaps a little bit more usable. So if I go back here and go into the apps folder and bring up, say, music, I can see all the music related automations in this one view. And the same is true if I go into, say, the podcasts app. I can see all the podcast related stuff here. You can also scroll up and let me show you one other app that I think is really important if you're trying to control media playback in your house. And that is the Apple TV remote. And we'll see a little shortcut with that later on. But let's do the first shortcut, which is I want to be able to route the audio output of my iPod or my iPhone straight to my AirPods and then prompt me for the music I want to play and start the playback. So let's do that right now. So going into the media tab, I'm going to choose uh, set playback destination, which is here. Drag that over. So we're going to choose the playback destination. We also want to prompt for some music to be selected, which is under the music tab here. So say select music. So select music will prompt us each time the shortcut is run. If you know the exact music you want to play each time, then you can just use the play music shortcut here and select the exact music you want to play. And we'll see an example of that later on. But for now we want to be able to select music. If I go into show more, I want to choose select multiple songs here. That's great. This will allow me to choose a whole playlist or an album rather than just one song. And then I want to go to the playback options and choose play pause. So great. This is the basic setup. Now we need to choose the AirPods as our playback destination. Now for this to work, you actually need to have the AirPods on because otherwise the iPad can't see that the AirPods are available. So I'm gonna choose this little menu here and choose Rob's AirPods. Now, if when you press this menu, you get that bug, this does happen a bit. The way to fix this is to drag this down here. Let me click and drag. And now bring up the menu and you'll see the menu pops back up. I can choose Rob's AirPods. Now, if I go into here, choose play pause on iPad and scroll and choose Rob's AirPods, you'll see it isn't listed. There's a little weird knit here. This is the playback destination for the iPad, so play pause on the iPad will actually route things into the AirPods. So we can run this now and see what happens. So I click the play button down here, select some music from my playlist. So I'm going to choose the pure workout playlist. This is the icon to select the whole playlist, or I can just select one or two songs here if I want to. And then once I'm done, I can just press the done button. And I can hear this now playing on my AirPods. This is fantastic. Let me pause my <laughs> AirPods. I find the normal user interface for dealing with AirPods quite finicky. This is just a great way of making sure that you can immediately get music onto your AirPods. You can change this to podcasts or video if you want, but this should give you an idea about how that works. Now to save this, we just go up here, um, press next, give this a shortcut name. So music to, ooh, music to AirPods, I can't type today, and then we have to do the thing that takes the longest of any shortcut and that is choose an icon and a color scheme. So I'm gonna choose a little uh, icon here. Now, the one thing that's missing from the shortcuts app is a way to search the icon. So it really does take some time. I'm just gonna select a random one now. This is this play and maybe just choose red like that and then click done. Um, and that is me done. I now have a shortcut called music to AirPods. Now you wanna control where you can access this shortcut from. So if you go into the little three dot icon here, you can click three dots in here and then you can either add it to the home screen as a shortcut, which if you really want to do this a lot is great. I like to just keep it in the widget tab at the side, click done, click done. And if I bring up my widgets on the home page, you'll see there is my music to AirPods 
shortcut in the widgets tab. This is great. Now, if you have iCloud shortcut syncing set up, you'll now see this shortcut on your iPhone as well. So you only need to define it in the one place and it's ready to go on the iPhone. So we're not just limited to controlling our music or routing our output to the AirPods. We can do something more complicated as well. We can actually control the Apple TVs, the devices we might have in our houses. So let me show you a more involved shortcut now to set up your living room or, or TV room to watch a movie. So I'm going to dive straight into creating a new shortcut. And what I want to do first is wake up my Apple TV. And let me show you a quick way to find some shortcut actions. And that's using the search bar. So if I go into the search bar here and just type wake Apple TV or wake in case that you can see I've got that action here. So I'm going to drag that over. And once I've woken up the Apple TV, then I want to switch it into the films or the movies app. So I can just type Apple TV in here and get a sense for what is available. So I'm going to open app on Apple TV. And then I want to dim the lights in that room. I'm using uh, Philips Hue bulbs, but all of this is available through the home. So I can just choose control my home. That's great. Um, and that is pretty much everything I want to do in this action for now, but we'll see something really cool in a second. So let's choose which Apple TV. So I've got two in my house. It takes a little time for this to scan, but I'm gonna choose the one in the living room. And then if you choose open app on Apple TV, you have to choose the Apple TV first, and then you can choose which app it is you want. So I now want to choose the films app. And then in here, set scenes and accessories. This allows us to control all the Apple home devices. I'm just gonna choose the living room console table lamp, click next, and I want to turn it to off. So that just means that the light behind our TV is now turned off. Now this is great, I can turn the TV on, I can uh, open the Films app and I can set the console table lamp to be turned off. But if I'm watching a movie, I don't want to be disturbed. So what I really want to do is turn my device into do not disturb mode and we can do that really easily. So if I come into the search here and type do not disturb, I can set do not disturb to on until turned off. No, I want it to come back on after the movie's finished. So I want it to come back on in say two hours. So if we choose time, um, the issue here is you need to choose a specific time. You can't just say turn it off for two hours. However, we can calculate what time it will be in two hours. And we do that using the adjust date action. So I'm gonna drag that in between here. Then I'm gonna say add two hours to which day and down here at the bottom, you see we've got this variables tab. We have current date always as a like, special date. Add current date. And if I go back to this action here, I'm now able to choose this kind of magic variable, which is called adjusted date. And just so I can show you how you can determine where these variables come from, if you kind of click on this magic wand icon here, the graph expands and it shows you that this little node here is outputting this magic variable called adjusted date and it's that one that I want to add. So now when I run this icon again, it's going to do everything it did before, turn the TV on, switch into the TV app, the films app on the Apple TV and turn the lights off, but it's also gonna set my iPad to do not disturb for two hours. Let's see that in action. How cool is that? So we now have an easy way to automate a, a repeating action in the house, watch a movie, turn the lights off, set the font to not disturb. This is a really powerful thing. I'll just go through the actions of saving it now. So yay, uh, movie time. I'm not gonna choose an icon because that takes forever. And there we go, we have a cool little shortcut we can use every time we want to watch a movie. So I just want to show you one more shortcut that I have that involves media control. And that is a little shortcut I wrote to set up my environment for writing. So I like to open my writing app, which is bare. I want to play some music and I want to set do not disturb. So let's see how that works. So I'm in here in create a new shortcut. So the first thing I want to do is play the music and I'm gonna do that using the play music action from the music app. So choose play music here and drag that on. And I'm gonna select the music already here and I'm gonna go into my library, into my albums. And I actually have uh, an album of coffee shop background noise that I like to listen to when I'm writing, but obviously you choose what is best for you. Click the plus there to add the entire album to the playlist. Go into show more and I'm gonna choose shuffle all songs and on repeat everything. So this will just keep playing and playing and playing now while I'm working. So now I want to set up Do Not Disturb and unlike the previous example where we set Do Not Disturb for a fixed two hours, now I want to choose how long I want the Do Not Disturb to be on for each time I run the shortcut. And we do that using the Ask for Input node. 
So let's grab ask for input, drag that over. The question I'm going to ask is how long. And then if we come into show more, we get to choose the input type and we can choose the time. So what time do we want this to run till? So I'm going to choose that time and then I'm going to choose set do not disturb again. Bring that over on until the time and we have to choose the time. And if we see we have the ask for input here, which is the output of this. But if we get confused, just press the magic wand and you see exactly which variable it is. And then the final thing is just to open up the writing app, which is Bear, and create a new note in Bear. So we can search for Bear up here. There's a create Bear note action. Drag that in. I'm going to give it a title of writing time. And if I just expand this show more node here, what you'll see is that there's a return to shortcut shortcuts button. Now, by default, what Bear's going to do is run the shortcut, create the note, and then immediately come back to the shortcuts app, which is great for some workflows, but I want to end up in Bear, so I'm going to uncheck this option. Now, I'm ready to run this. So if I click the play button here, how long do I want? I'm going to run it until, say, 6.15. Okay. And there I am in my writing environment. This is brilliant. So I hope you found this little shortcuts video useful. If you'd like to see more of these, please put a comment below. My rough plan is to put out a video every Sunday on shortcuts. And if that's the kind of content you like, then please do let me know. Other than that, just thank you so much for watching. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. And don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming content. And I'll see you in the next video.